Folks, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, you're going to be super excited about Final Cut Pro 10.7, primarily because of one key feature that we're going to talk about right now. Let's check it out. So it was about three weeks ago now that I was able to attend the Final Cut Pro Creative Summit in California. And during this trip, I had the privilege of actually going to Apple's campus, Apple Park in Cupertino, uh, to check out the new version of Final Cut Pro. It was, it was actually revealed there, um, right there on campus, which was pretty awesome to experience that. Uh, the cool thing is we actually got to see an unreleased version of Final Cut Pro version 10.7 and some of the new features that will be accompanying that release. Um, as a part of the, the event, we got these little badges here. Uh, these little badges allowed us, I guess, to, to actually get into Apple Park and be a part of this event, which is really cool. Uh, so that's why I had this little guy right here. But the, the overall experience was awesome. It's not my first time at Apple Park, but Anytime you're invited to go there or you're able to go there, it's obviously something you probably want to take advantage of if you're a fan of Apple. And it's just really cool to experience that, even with the strict no photos rules and things like that. But that's beside the point. I was really appreciative that Apple allowed us to do that. It's not something that normally, I mean, they're a secretive company. They keep their cards close to their chest. They're not somebody or a company that really um, divulges a lot of information before it's time to do so. Uh, so it was pretty cool to be able to see this unreleased version and have the Final Cut Pro team there to, to talk us through some of these new features. Earlier in that day, a, a new version of Logic was announced, but then they waited until a little bit later until we were actually in this press event uh, where Apple, uh, the Final Cut Pro team, actually walked us through all the new features for 10.7. And like I was saying at the beginning, there is one key feature that stands out above the rest, and it is the automatic scrolling timeline. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but folks, I've been using Final Cut Pro 10 since its release. I mean, it's been over a decade, and this is a feature I have wanted since day one. And I know a lot of other creators and Final Cut Pro advocates uh, have been wanting this feature as well. And I have to tell you, it looks very cool. So basically, how Final Cut Pro has worked up until now is that when you play a clip um, on the timeline and say you're zoomed into that clip and the playhead goes off the screen, the playhead just keeps going off the screen and you can't really see where you are in relation to the timeline. So you have to pause and then you have to, to get back to your playhead, start again, and it's just not as convenient as it would be to have the timeline scroll. Um, so that's number one. So automatic scrolling timeline will follow your playhead as you're playing back, but not just that. So along with that automatic scroll, Apple is actually redrawing all the waveform data for, for like audio and for video. Um, so you get not only the waveform data for the audio, but you can also see the actual video clips as this timeline is scrolling. Now, from what I'm able to gather from Apple's press release, I don't think the automatic scrolling timeline requires Apple Silicon. There is a feature that definitely does require Apple Silicon. We'll talk about that here in a few, but it doesn't seem like that Apple Silicon is a prerequisite for this automatic timeline scrolling. We'll see how that functions with Intel processors once it's released, but I would imagine you would get the best experience from an Apple Silicon enabled Mac. So again, this scrolling and the redrawing of the waveforms and being able to see your clips across the timeline as you're scrolling is going to be a fairly big deal for creators because it's going to it's going to speed up our workflow. We're not going to have to stop and allow the, the system to redraw everything just to see where you are at con contextually. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to be a very good thing in my opinion. I'm interested to hear what you guys think though. I know some people are probably kind of disappointed with this update um, because there's a lot of features, a lot of low hanging fruit, to be honest, that um, users are pining for. I mean, let's just talk about some of those features. I actually created a list of some of the features that I've been wanting. Um, things like native uh, B-RAW support, if you're a Blackmagic camera shooter. Um, there's also no text-based editing. That is obviously very high on the list of a lot of users. Adobe Premiere Pro has text-based editing. 
um, and there's other applications that do as well. And that makes it so you can go in and um, search for dialogue and edit based on that dialogue. It's really, really powerful stuff. Um, modular workspaces. Uh, so Premiere Pro has the ability to really customize your workspaces in a way that, to be honest, is a lot more powerful than Final Cut Pro. Now, Final Cut does have some workspace features that, that are nice, but I just would like to have a little bit more control to customize, like moving the browser from one location to the other, uh, moving the timeline, having multiple timelines and things like that. Custom LUTs. So say you apply a LUT to a clip using the LUT effect tool, not going into the information inspector and then applying one of those default LUTs, but actually applying the custom LUT uh, effect and then applying that to the clip. It would be really cool if that LUT showed up in the browser so you don't have a lot of like washed out you know, log footage in your browser still. Whereas when you add the, the uh, default LUTs, it shows up in the browser and it's just a lot easier to browse through that footage and kind of see what's going on. In my opinion, with all that being said, I still think this is a great update because the automatic scrolling timeline is something that, like I said, tons of users have wanted for, for many, many years, and it's gonna be awesome. Here's my question though. I just wonder how it's gonna work with voiceovers because again, when you're recording a voiceover, once you, you start recording, you don't see the waveform at all. Like you can see the audio meters, but you're not seeing a waveform at all for that voiceover. So it'll be really cool. I hope, I would think that you will be able to get that real-time voiceover waveform as well. So this is gonna be just a, a, a mwah, <laughs> amazing update just on that one feature alone. Apple Silicon brings forth some, some speed improvements as well. And this was what I was talking about earlier. There is one feature that requires you to have Apple Silicon, but not just that you actually need some of the more powerful chips. And that feature will allow you to process H.264 and H. or HEVC media using multiple media engines in parallel. So think about that. It's gonna speed up exporting uh, dramatically, I would think. Um, so being able to use more than one media engine, you'll now be able to process uh, HEVC and H.264 video exports in parallel. Uh, basically Final Cut Pro will segment those and assign them to the various media encode engines um, and be able to process, the, process those simultaneously. You, you're gonna need some of the more powerful uh, chips in order to use that because those chips have multiple media encode engines. So you're gonna need macOS Sonoma or later, and then you're gonna need a Mac with an Apple M1 Max, M1 Ultra, M2 Max, M2 Ultra, or M3 Max. So basically a Max or an Ultra is the only way you're gonna be able to use that parallel processing for exports. And some other speed improvements related to Apple Silicon. So the object tracker gets a new machine learning module and that's gonna provide faster and more accurate analysis of objects and faces when using Apple Silicon enabled Macs. So that's gonna be cool. And another feature is connected storylines. So in 10.7, you're gonna be able to highlight multiple overlapping connected clips and that can span a, a very wide range of your timeline. And you're gonna be able to create what is called a connected storyline. And basically it will condense all those connected clips into one clip, sort of like a compound clip. But the cool thing about this is that it expands right on the timeline. So it doesn't like send you to another timeline like a compound clip does, but you can expand it or collapse it right there on the main timeline. And not just that, it's gonna allow users to combine connected clips with existing connected storylines for even greater timeline cleanup. So this is definitely gonna be a huge feature for those that work with really complex edits. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying this out myself. And then there's also improved roles. So you're gonna have distinct colors that let you identify and highlight clips by role using the timeline index. And again, it's all in an effort to make organization that much better and being able to have a more efficient workflow with those roles, uh, using those to organize your timeline. So yeah, those are the key features for 10.7. Obviously there are probably more little features uh, that Apple hasn't yet talked about. We'll, we'll explore those once the app is released or once the update is released. So this trip, it was a short one, but it was definitely worth it. Um, it's like, like I was saying, it's just um, nice to be able to interact with the Final Cut Pro team. They don't have to do this. And 
despite some of the negativity that I've heard about this update and other updates, it's clear that they truly do care about Final Cut Pro. Given the scale of Apple and the sort of uh, management structure, we have to be patient because they're, they can't just release updates after updates after updates. They have to make sure, number one, things are stable, but there is a, a structure within Apple that they have to work within that structure. Uh, and I think they're doing a pretty great job of doing that given uh, everything involved with their roles. I mean, are there things that I wish Final Cut Pro had that it doesn't have now? Obviously, right? But I am very happy with this update. Uh, it shows they're listening to users and Apple is always advocating us to go in. So there is an actual, um, hopefully most of you know about this, but if you open up Final Cut Pro, you go to the Final Cut menu, you'll see where it says provide Final Cut Pro feedback. Use that feedback form because they do actually listen to our feedback. And um, I've submitted tons of, of feature requests. So far, none of them have been implemented just yet, but I'm hopeful. So um, we'll, we'll keep doing that and keep providing feedback. But that is Final Cut Pro 10.7. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.